Yes, I'm rather proud of that, actually, how in 1951 we explained this involved economic truth in simple review terms. <laughs> Alas, all too true today. In April 1953, Laurie Lister uh, reopened the Royal Court Theatre in Sloane Square with the review Airs on a Shoestring. It had a, a wonderful cast led by Max Hadrian, Moira Fraser, Betty Marsden, Sally Rogers, uh, Pat Lancaster, and a couple of young men who've done rather well for themselves since, Dennis Quilly and Peter Reeves. And for Airs on a Shoestring, Laurie asked us to provide something for each of the ladies in the company. It struck me that Shakespeare had perhaps been a little remiss uh, in only writing The Seven Ages of Man, <laughs> which certainly nowadays might be called a bit of male chauvinist bacon. Why didn't he write Seven Ages of Woman? It's a sort of silly question that review writers ask themselves, <laughs> which we proceeded to do for him. And here it is. The various ladies of different ages are played by Pat Lancaster and Rogers and Charlotte Mitchell, the baby girl at the beginning is Donald, and the old lady at the end is me. Now, each is introduced by a piece of neo-Shakespearean verse. And who better to do that after his great success at the National Theatre as one of the gusts in The Tempest? <laughs> and Julian Otter. Mewling and puking in no nurse's arms, for nurses are extinct throughout the nation, the infant daughter's first displays her charms, a living argument for limitation. <laughs> My earliest babysitter was a certain Mrs. Rushforth, who declared she'd sat with babies by the score. I dribbled down her dress and then I bit her. A Mrs. Rushforth who won't be sitting anymore. <laughs> They approached our next door neighbour, known as dear old Mrs. Nelson. She'd never sat, but longed to have a try. I tossed her umbrella like a caper. And Mrs. Nelson won't go sitting with one eye. But the lady from the agency, I somehow set on fire. I gave the vicar measles. And he gave it to the choir. <laughs> My parents' final effort, babysitter Miss El Draco, is as different from the others as can be. She waits until we're quite alone. She disconnects the telephone. She locks the doors, then firmly sits on me. <laughs> the schoolgirl next with shining evening face. At her first dance, self-conscious, overgrown, afraid to move, in terror of disgrace, escaping to a dream world of her own. It happened tonight at the tennis club ball. For hours and hours I sat by the wall. Then suddenly someone came out of the crowd. May I have the pleasure, he said, and he bowed. I paused before answering rather too loud. Oh, no, I'm afraid I don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was dreadfully angry and said, I pay for your lessons at school. So why, when at last you're invited to dance, do you have to behave like an absolute fool? I wanted to dance. I was just on the brink. But while he was speaking, I started to think. I thought... If we dance, he'll admire my new dress. Perhaps he'll propose and I'll have to say yes. I thought of my marriage and then where it led. Estrangement, divorce, how I wish I were dead. <laughs> I thought of my children. So that's why I said, oh no, I'm afraid I don't dance. <laughs> The only boy in the world for her, our number three's young man knows what he's at, we hope. For if his calculations err, quite soon he may be literally that. My boy is a nuclear physicist, helps Sir William Penny down at Harwell. My boy is a nuclear physicist, making his atomic pile. He is just an ordinary fellow. He disintegrated Montebello and when the lights are low there's more than uranium in his cranium my boy is a nuclear physicist and I'm 
longing to be his bride For he makes less fuss of the nucleus But rather more of the physical side And now, with the Lord Chamberlain's consent, tomorrow's mother on our stage we see. She's properly prepared for the event with antenatal care. A-N-T-E. It's ever so nice at the clinic As soon as your trouble begins They keep you for days and they weighs and x-rays Till they're practically sure it's not going to be twins It's ever so nice at the clinic Enjoying some prenatal care You meet all your chums who are about to be mums Oh, everyone ought to be there the doctors and the nursing staff do all they can to spoil. They give you pills to take away and lovely great bottles of cod liver oil. I hope you won't think me a cynic, but honest, I'm dreading the day when it's hail smiling more, my baby is born. And the clinic will send me away. Fifth stands the harassed housewife in the rain, thankfully grasping a Pandora's casket, which all her goods, not evils, doth contain. A big two-wheeled, long-handled shopping basket. <laughs> Shopping, I am dressing, I'm reminded what a blessing is the kind of shopping basket you can push. I should like to thank the makers, you can trail it to the bakers and the butchers and then back to Shepherd's Bush. Ah, the children love to ride it when I've got the coal inside it. And the washing, it has every sort of use. On its own in perfect silence, it will ladder ladies' nylons when they try to push in front of me in queues. <laughs> Though the wicker work is soiling, and the axle screams for oiling, and it's got a sort of stutter in one wheel. Though I sadly overtask it, yet I love the little basket. <laughs> The basket knows the way I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Our next is last but one upon the bill, as imperceptibly time turns the page. Her children, parents now, seem children still. A youthful heart beats on through middle age. I never thought, quite suddenly, the day would come at last when I must quietly tell myself, my dear, your youth is past. Now you must learn to wear a shawl and wrap up when it's cold. For yesterday I felt still young. Today I know I'm old. Today a bus conductor showed me age has left its scar. Instead of saying, hop in ducks, he said, now come on, ma. <laughs> We finally present age number seven. This grandam's not yet had her final fling. Thanks be originally to Bevan, with teeth, with specs, with hair, with everything. <laughs> It's a wonderful year, it's a wonderful date, and the family's here to celebrate to it. Find to be known as great, 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 I'm 104 today. All well, the mayor's in his way, and the vicar's been, and a man from the ladies' magazine. The telegram here from the dear young queen, I'm 104 today. I'm 104, it may be more, there's nobody left who has kept the score. I was just a gal, remember well, on the first Trafalgar day. Surrounded by my kith and kin, I'm waiting for the party to begin. There's a wonderful spread for din, 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 so fetch those damn reporters in. And tell him I owe it all to gin. <laughs> I'm 104 today. Mm. 
Though I simply hate to tell you, parish records clearly show you have not yet reached a hundred. You have still six years to go. Oh, dear, a word. Never mind, Your Honor. It's one thing you have. 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 It